Well, today we are back out on the Hobie kayak. We've got some absolutely beautiful conditions. We're gonna go back to some bread and butter fishing. So we've got the light spin outfits. We're gonna head out to sort of that six and eight meters deep. We're gonna drift around for some flathead. So this is a time of year, you get the nice calm conditions, generally quite productive. And it's also the time that you get some decent sized flathead. So I'm gonna run you through some tips and techniques on how to target flathead with soft plastics whilst we're drifting around. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our session in nice and shallow, only fishing in two to three meters deep, really looking for your weedy beds, getting out some squid jigs, and hopefully starting the day by catching a couple of squid. Can't wait, I'm always excited to get here. I thank you for your company. I hope you enjoy the episode, and let's get fishing. Good squid on here. Just gonna keep that tension on the rod because this feels like a nice squid. There we go, this is a good one. So this is on that green and gold in squid jig. So this is a nice squid. Uh, lost him here. Oh, he doesn't wanna come up. There we go. <laughs> good one. There we go. Okay. So there you go. So there is your first squid of the day. So that's taken about 10 casts. So that's a really good sign. It's not a huge one, but you know what? That's a really nice eating size. And uh, if we can get a few more of those on the board, then uh, we're doing well. So we're gonna dispatch this guy, get him in the esky on ice, and hopefully add to that total pretty shortly. He's, oh, here we go, got another one, got another one. Yep, definitely. It's on the green and gold, mate. Yep, so it's a bit smaller this one, but it's a squid. Okay, so when you're squid fishing in a boat or in a kayak like I am, you don't need the most extravagant gear. So today I've just got a very standard two to four kilo rod and a 2,500 size reel. So this is almost what you consider like an entry level outfit. Um, there's some very, very clever marketing around the squid scene, you know, double handles and extra length rods and stuff like that. Now, some of that does really come into play, particularly when you're land-based fishing. So if you're land-based fishing on a rock wall or a jetty or a pier, and you need to get that extra casting distance and you need to battle the wind and you want to get extra work and, you know, really big vigorous movement on your squid jigs, then that stuff can come into play. But I think when you're drifting in the shallows on a boat or on a kayak, that you can get away with you know, not having to go too fancy. So I've bagged out many, many, many occasions just using standard basic gear like this. And I think the more important thing is to be really aware of your surroundings. And for me, that's really targeting those shallow weedy areas. Oh, I had one on then, had one on. Um, so for me, I'm fishing right at the moment in 2.4 meters deep. I can actually see over the side. And then all I'm doing is covering ground and I'm only fishing the areas where you can see that really thick weed on the bottom. And to me, that's where the squid are. Now the logic is, in certain areas of the bay, that's where squid like to lay their eggs, and that's why they congregate around those weedy areas in good numbers. So for them, it's cover, it's ground, it's food, and to me, really honing in on those spots is gonna be a productive way of getting onto squid. And what you're basically doing with your squid jig is you're basically casting it out, letting it sink, and then doing some pretty vigorous sort of lifting action. And what you are trying to do is to imitate like a wounded prawn or a bait fish. So squid love to eat things like pilchards and silver whiting and all those small bait fish that are a pretty uh, aggressive predator. And all you're doing is you're just mimicking one of those bait fish that they're gonna come along and take. And I think right now we've got some basic gear, but we're in the right area and hopefully we'll get ourselves onto a good feed of calamari. Big squid, big squid, yep. Good squid. Yep, another squid. It's a bit chaos here. There we go. There you go. Okay, so we've come out to deeper water now, so we're just fishing in 5.5 meters. 
and just using one of those Kitec Easy Shiners now. So that's a four inch, very, very natural minnow presentation. So that's gonna be great for a whole range of species, particularly around here in your sandy flats. Flathead are not a fussy eater. They will take just about everything and it will really surprise you in the different sizes and the different colors of what they will take. I've caught flathead on everything from a little two and a half inch grub all the way through to your really big swim baits and even things like your 120 mils squidgy wriggler and things like that. So the key thing is you've really got to take a range of soft plastics when you're out fishing and kind of work out on the day what is working and not be afraid to chop and change. So if I cover what some of my favorites have historically been, so obviously the Berkeley four inch turtleback worm and the Berkeley seven inch turtleback worm, they're absolutely dynamite. So they work really, really well. So today I'm just using one of the four inch uh, Kitec Easy Shiners. So that is a very, very natural presentation. Just looks like a, a bait fish so, so well. So when you hop that off the bottom, it just looks like a wounded bait fish. Um, you can use your Z-Man grubs, the two and a half inch and the three inch size. There is a green color, which is pumpkin seed, and it's got the red dots and flecks in it. So that one works really, really good on flathead in that three inch size. Um, your four inch jerk shads uh, work remarkably well. So Berkeley makes some really, really good stuff there. I find that that nuclear, here we go, got one here. Here we go. Uh, I find that that nuclear chicken color works really, really well. So this feels like a decent fish. So this was on that Kitec Easy Shiner. And this has got a little bit of weight to it. So, oh, this is a nice fish. Oh yeah, this, oh Tanner, it's a beast of a flathead. It's huge. Oh, I don't want to lose it. That's a big, big, big flatty, mate. Oh, it's, <laughs> that is a, <laughs> yes. This is a huge flathead. Oh my goodness, it is absolutely monstered. That Kitec Easy Shiner. Oh, that is a huge flathead. Wow, I actually got a bit nervous when that got to the kayak side because um, I was worried that that was gonna, this, this is a really, really good fish, a really good fish. So I'm super excited about this one. So there you go, that's what did the damage. So that is that four inch Kitec Easy Shiny. You can see these plastics, they look amazing, but they're not very durable. They do break very, very easily. But that has accounted for this fish here. So we're gonna have to be quite careful. I'm definitely using the lip grips. I usually am, um, very cautious when I am handling flathead, especially ones of this size. In Port Phillip Bay, a flathead over 40 centimeters is a, a pretty good catch. And this one here, as you're gonna see, is well over 40 centimeters. Causing a bit of line tangles here on deck. So we wanna, so there we go there. So that is your flathead. So that is a awesome, awesome fish. That is a big angry flathead. So you can see there, that is what it's all about. So he's just calmed down for a little bit there. Now I'm using the lip grips. As you know, I really do care for the fish. Really want to handle them carefully. Um, and as you can see, look at that. That is a beautiful big flathead. Now you got to be very careful when handling flathead. They've got two big spines on the back of their head and they're very sharp and they will cause you to bleed quite a lot. The best way to stop the bleeding, a bit of an old wives tale, is to rub that wound on the top of the flathead's head. And apparently there's a little bit of an anticoagulant in that that actually stops the bleeding. But if you've ever been spiked by one of these things, you'll know because it hurts and you do bleed quite a lot. And that is an absolute cracking fish. Very, very happy with that one. Is these, that's what I just caught this beast of a flathead on now. So they're the four inch Kitec Easy Shiners. You can see they just got a really natural presentation looking color. Um, don't be afraid to experiment. Use different stuff, change colors, go white, go nuclear chicken, go motor oil, go. Just be confident in experimenting. Give something a good 15 or 20 minutes. If you're not getting any, any touches, then move on to something else. And you're gonna find there's gonna be a pattern that you're gonna work out. The conditions now are just so, so still. We're getting a bite here, sorry, actually, there we go. Oh, not bad. That's a good fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Good fish. I was just about to say how it's so still and things. Mate, this is a good fish. 
This is pulling so much drag. Whoa, what the hell is this? Wow, this is a really good fish. Man, this is taking a bit of line. I don't want to lose this one. Oh, I can hear that line is just... Whoa. What is this? Holy crap. This is a big fish. This is a really good fish. Just want to get it to the yak before we get the net out and panic. I don't want to tighten the drag. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a really big flathead, the way it's fighting. But I don't want to put too much on it. I just want to, wow, this is going to be a good fish. This is going to be a really, really good sized fish. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, it's a beast of a flathead. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yes. Ooh. That is a big flathead. I reckon it's a rock flathead as well. Wow. And I was gonna just talk to you about the challenges that you have when the conditions are this still. And as you can see, the conditions are absolutely breathtaking. There is not a ripple in the water. It is just as still as still can be, which means that it is so comfortable to be out here. The only challenge that you've got is when it's that comfortable, it's almost too comfortable. And what I mean by that is, is there's no movement. So on the axe here, we are not anchored up. And what we like to do is we like to drift and cover ground. I've actually got the plotter on, on the sounder, and I can see we're not actually moving at all. So the problem that you've got, if you're not catching fish, you're not actually covering any ground. So what you've got to do is just sort of fish in an isolated area for five, 10 minutes, and then just sort of keep moving and kind of create ground yourself. And just as I was about to say that, the rod went off and I've landed this absolutely beautiful big rock flathead. So this is a magnificent fish. So I'm gonna get the lip grips out to hold this one. I'm gonna give you a good look at it because this is a beautiful fish. You can tell it's a rock flathead because it's got those beautiful yellow spots on it. Um, so this one here is, I'm gonna say probably in the mid 40s. This is a beautiful fish. These are fantastic eating. Um, but geez, the fight on that one was fantastic. Obviously, it's very, very still conditions, one or two tiny lifts of the rod tip, and then all of a sudden that drag started screaming. Now, flathead are not notorious fighters. They're quite a docile fish, but that took quite a bit of line. It actually went on a few runs, and that there is a magnificent flathead. And uh, for this poor guy, we are gonna put that on ice, and that's gonna be lunch, because that is a magnificent eating fish. But that was fantastic, so. So also just to remind everyone, definitely stick within your catch limits and sizes. One thing about flathead is once they reach a certain size, the flathead actually turn to a female and they become your breeders. So the bigger ones that you catch, they're the ones that are responsible for spawning all your little ones that you have out here, letting a lot of those bigger ones go because we want to see them flourish. We want to see a lot more flathead in these areas. And obviously now is a lot of that netting has stopped in areas like Port Phillip Bay. We're hoping to see the absolute fishing here flourish in years to come, which is really, really important because fishing has grown so much as a recreational activity and there is a lot more fishing pressure. And that's just because it's growing in popularity. There's more people out in the bay fishing. There's more boats, there's more kayaks, there's more jet skis. So letting some of those big ones go is a really good idea. And I must admit, I take a lot of pride in watching those big girls swim away. It's just a really, really awesome thing to experience. Now, one of the most important things when you're fishing out on a kayak is to be organized. And basically it's almost a case of less is more. And what I mean by that is, I really want this cockpit area to be absolutely clear of any sort of clutter. And you notice a lot of times, I'm only usually fishing with one or two fishing rods. I don't bring a lot of bait with me. I usually have one or two versatile rods that I can flick between soft plastics and squid jigs and hard body lures. And I try and keep it really lean and mean. Now that doesn't stop you from catching fish. The fact that you've got less gear and less rods, or you've got things stored away nicely, um, it's not gonna prevent you from catching fish. If anything, it actually helps you to hone in on that specific technique that you're doing. 
and it helps you to stay organized so that way when you get a fish it's going to be a lot easier to land and you're also going to find it's just going to be easier for you to kind of organize your day on the water this feels nice actually Ah, oh, yeah, it's a, probably in the mid-30s of flatty. There we go. All right. All right, we'll let this one go. Anything that's under 35 can go and fight another day in my books. Put that one there. Let's see if we can get another. Oh, that was a, that was a hit. Now flathead are an awesome fish to target on soft plastics and if you're new to this style of fishing then you really want to start off by using something like a spin rod that's either two to four kilo or two to five kilo you can drop down to one to three kilo if you really enjoy a challenge you can probably move up to about three to five kilo at its heaviest if you want to go nice and easy now flathead are a beautiful fish to catch they love baits and they love soft plastics and they're one of the more the easier fish species to target around here so they love the shallow flats all we're doing is working the soft plastics nice and slowly, little hops off the bottom because they are an ambush predator. They like to just sit on the bottom and wait for a mullet or a bait fish to come over and you're basically imitating that with your soft plastic. So by working it nice and slowly, you're really just keeping it in the strike zone, a couple of little twitches and lifts. So this is a really fun form of fishing, great eating fish, so a really, really good table fish. We're gonna keep just drifting along this area, covering a bit of ground and hopefully we get a couple more to share with you. Oh, here we go. Gotcha. Small one. Nah, flatty. Well, it's funny, the, the, I've got a, a, a spot here called fl the flathead hole. And it's, uh, and it's, yeah, it's 17 meters. So it's kind of, oh, actually, got him, got him. You said it was right on the spot. Feel small this one though. Yeah, he's a smally one. Uh, he's probably just legal, but I'll let that go. 